The Secret World of Walter Anderson by Hester Bass Illustrated by E. B. Lewis Published by Candlewick Press There once was a man whose love of nature was as wide as the world. There once was an artist who needed to paint as much as he needed to breathe. There once was an islander who lived in a cottage at the edge of Mississippi, where the sea meets the earth and the sky. His name was Walter Anderson. He may be the most famous American artist you've never heard of. To see a great heron's nest, he would climb a tree. To draw a sphinx moth against a pattern of bulrushes, he would wade up to his shoulders. Art was an adventure, and Walter Anderson was an explorer first class. While the sun was still sleeping, Walter Anderson would get ready for a trip to his favorite place to paint. He used metal garbage cans as suitcases. He packed apples and raisins and peanut butter and rice. He packed paints and brushes and pencils and eight and a half by eleven inch typing paper. He wore his scruffy old weather-beaten hat. He never went anywhere without his hat. It shaded his eyes, held art supplies, and often transported his models such as snakes, birds, and raccoons. Walter locked the door to one little room in his cottage. He didn't let anybody in there. Maybe a possum or a mouse, but not his wife or children. Nobody. Ever. That was his little room. He pinned a note to the screen door of his front porch. Gone to Horn Island. A star was still shining in the sky, and cricket song hung in the air. Walter had found pieces of a boat washed up on the beach and put them back together like a puzzle. He slid his leaky green skiff into the bayou that led to Biloxi Bay, which led to the Mississippi Sound and the Gulf of Mexico beyond. A kingfisher rattled farewell. A blue heron stood at attention. There were twelve miles of open water between Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and Horn Island. Sometimes Walter used an umbrella for a sail, but usually he rowed every stroke. Dolphins and pelicans escorted Walter on his journey. The sun and the wind and his shadow kept him company. His boat bobbed in the waves for hours and hours until he pulled the skiff on shore. There would be no warm bed waiting for Walter, no running water, no bathroom or kitchen. Horn was a wild, wind-swept barrier island where life had never been easy. Once there had been a lighthouse. Once there had been a farm. But no one lived on Horn Island anymore. There were biting flies, hungry mosquitoes, swarming gnats, fire ants, venomous snakes, blistering heat, blinding sun, freezing cold, stinging rain, and roaring wind. But for Walter, to paint on Horn Island was to be in paradise. Walter was not alone on Horn Island. He had many friends there. After he set up camp, Walter sometimes held a housewarming banquet with prunes for the raccoons and rice for the rabbits and birds. The rats always got some, too. When Walter was thirsty, he got fresh water from an old well he called Rabbit Springs. When it went brackish, wild hogs left over from the farm helped him find water to drink. Walter would stay on Horn Island for weeks at a time in all kinds of weather, using his boat as a shelter. When Walter was hungry, he often had a mystery feast, because the cans of food he brought would get wet and the labels would slide off. He cooked over a fire. Sometimes he would eat whatever washed up. A jar of pickles, an orange. There was always something on the beach. Once there were seven or eight miles of bananas. Food was scarce on the island, and the animals seemed to dance around all those bananas on the sand. And Walter painted them. Walter also kept journals, writing and drawing about everything he experienced. He called them logs, and they revealed how deeply he wanted to harmonize with the symphony of nature. Walter would draw and paint all his friends on Horn Island, from sunrise till after nightfall. He especially loved the last magic hour before sunset, as the colors of the world were melting into darkness. Sometimes he got animals to come closer by feeding them like pets. Reddy the duck, Split-Ear the rabbit, Inky the raccoon, 
Slimy the frog. Sometimes Walter tried to rescue animals, but often they were too sick or hurt to be saved. He would paint them even in death, for they were still magnificent, and because images were food for Walter Anderson. And on an island, no food is ever wasted. Some people called him crazy for living like a hermit just to paint fish and animals and birds and plants. But Walter Anderson spent some of the happiest times of his life on Horn Island. Walter Anderson survived snake bite and hurricanes, but in 1965 he became seriously ill. Nevertheless, he continued drawing. While in the hospital, he drew the other patients. Doctors did everything that could be done, but Walter Anderson died in the city of New Orleans where he had been born 62 years before. The little room in his cottage was still locked. What was inside remained a mystery until one day his wife unlocked the door, and what she saw took her breath away. The walls were covered with paintings of a Gulf Coast day. Animals creeping home at dawn, birds roosting in the trees at sunset, all crowned by a giant zinnia on the ceiling. There was art everywhere. Throughout his life he had painted murals and block prints and pottery for everybody else, for the public, but Walter Anderson had kept his Horn Island paintings and drawings private, hidden, just for himself. Walter Anderson took the time to truly see what was all around him. He concentrated so intensely on his subjects that he felt he became that tree, that flower, or that bird, especially among his friends on Horn Island. He painted because that's what he loved to do. He saw the world in a wildly original way, and he transformed his experience into shapes and lines, patterns and colors. Walter Anderson painted to realize his secret world, to bring himself and nature into one thing called art.